Hello again, folks. I'm Trish Triumph O'Sullivan, and today I'm going to talk to you about motion, which also has to do with assignment number three. So let's get right to it. So the control on your camera that controls motion is your shutter. Your shutter is, you know, they call it shutter speed, but um, it talks about the speed of the shutter is how long it takes to open and close, right? So it could be really slow, 1001, right? Or it could be really like that's one second, right? Or it could be really fast, like a split second, like one three thousandth of a second. That's really, really fast. You can capture motion with your shutter in three different ways um, with, our, with our assignment. And we're gonna, sh I'm gonna show you how. So, we talked about shutter speeds, right? So one would be one second. Right? Um, and remember, it's a fraction. So a shutter speed you might see on your shutter would be 1 15th, 1 30th, 1 60th, 1 1 25th. One two fiftieth, one five hundredth, one one thousandth, one two thousandth, okay, and so on, because it can go faster. Some people have shutter speeds of up to one five thousandth of a second, which is extremely fast. Um, so assignment number three, we're really going to focus on this. And I'm going to talk about two more controls on your shutter that if you have a fully manual camera, an SLR or a DSLR, you'll probably have these controls on your, um, on your camera. So when it goes slower than a second, you will see the, the readout on your screen for a digital camera. You'll see it something like this. You'll see maybe like three seconds, 15 seconds. And I know we think this is inches, but in this case, they're using this for seconds. Okay, so three seconds, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, um, at 45 seconds. A lot of times you'll see these controls um, on your camera that will give you actual seconds. Um, on most cameras that are fully manual, you also see a B, or it'll say bow. And you might also see a T, and that stands for time. So the bulb setting will, it keeps the shutter open as long as the shutter release button is held down. Okay, shutter open as long as the button is held down with your finger. The time one is the shutter opens. Shutter opens when you press down. Okay, and then closes when pressed again, when, 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 down, when pressed down again. the second time so these are specialty settings for like night long night exposures where say you want to get a photo of the moon right that's something where it takes a long exposure to get a proper uh, setting for enough light to get in your camera so these kind of settings are great for kind of cool nighttime effects night shots um, normally we're just going to be using these ones the fractions because these are slow. These are for, like I said, specialty shots, night shots, things that aren't moving, um, but you're like in a darkened room. And like our eyes, right, because our eyes don't function in the dark, we need light for our camera to see. Um, if, if we're in a dark room, we, if it's completely dark, we really can't see anything. But our eyes will adjust even to the tiniest light over time, and so will, will our cameras. So, um, and that's where the shutter speed can come into effect. Um, so long shut, really slow shutter speeds are usually only used for things, objects that are not moving, right? 
Otherwise you can get what we call motion blur. And we're gonna try to get some motion blur in this assignment, okay? Um, and that's the fun of assignment number three, which is motion. And we're gonna use the control on our camera that controls motion, and that's the shutter. Um, we're going to end up with three images and one we're going to use, um, is going to be motion blur. Okay. And for that, we're going to need a slow shutter speed. Remember we talked about slow would be like, you know, maybe one thirtieth of a second, All right? So that's a slow shutter. So that's to blur motion. And blurring motion is a way to describe motion in a still photograph. Obviously, we're not taking videos, right? In a video, it's pretty easy to see what's moving because the stuff's actually moving. In a um, still photograph, we've got to show, we've, we have to be able to show um, motion without a video. So motion blur is one way. Um, the second thing we're going to do is we're going to do a pan shot. A pan shot is also a slow shutter. So we'll have one thirtieth of a second, right, um, on your shutter. And the third shot we're going to do is a freeze motion. And that's normally what we would call a high speed shutter. And that number would be represented in a fraction of a second, probably one one thousandth of a second. Now, depending on how slow an object is moving, okay, you could actually maybe freeze motion with a shutter speed of 125, right? 1 25th of a second, or even 1 250th of a second depending not only on how far away your subject is, because the further away your subject is, the, um, oops, excuse me for just a sec. Okay, sorry about that depending on how far away your subject is, they may seem to move slower. And you can think of it like this. If you're watching an airplane in the sky going over, it appears to be moving very slowly, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It seems like it's kind of just slowly inching its way across the sky. But actually it's probably moving super fast. Like it could be moving like 500 miles an hour or 200 miles an hour, who knows, but pretty, pretty fast, right? but it appears because it's really far away to be moving more slowly. So uh, it's pretty easy to freeze motion if you're taking a picture of an airplane up in the sky, but it might be really difficult to freeze motion with a slow, with, with a slow shutter speed anyway, if the airplane was like on the runway right next to you, right? Because it's moving pretty fast on that runway. So you wouldn't be able to use a slow shutter speed. However, further away, you can. And I'll get into that in a separate lecture. We'll go over a little bit more about motion, right? So for our, our three types of photographs, we're going to do motion blur, which is blurring motion. We're going to do a pan shot and we're going to freeze motion with a high speed shutter. So these two here, right? Slow shutter. This one, fast shutter, slow and fast. Okay. Um, and so how are we gonna do that? Well, I'm gonna do a demo of this as well, but I'm gonna write it on the board so you get the idea of exactly what we're gonna do. So for the motion blur, um, we're gonna, well, my demo, I'm gonna use cars, okay? So I'm gonna actually go to a street that has fast moving cars and I'm gonna take a couple photos of cars. I will do it you know, with video so you'll be able to see what I'm doing um, and I'll show you the results, okay? So the first two images we're gonna do 
we're gonna do on a street and we're gonna um, we're gonna do the motion blur and what that means is when in the photograph right so we're on a street so we have you know, maybe a couple of houses and a tree and here's the car speeding by. So in the motion blur, the background is sharp. And this is at 1 30th of a second on your shutter. And you're probably going to have your aperture because if it's a sunny day, um, uh, your aperture is probably going to be at, say, F. I'm gonna say F8. You might have to go to F4 to open it up a little bit more. Um, uh, but F8 or F11 should be should be okay for your aperture for this one, right? So on the motion blur, the background is sharp, right? In focus, that's what that means, right? The background is sharp, and the subject is blurry, right? It's out of focus, right? Because it's moving. So we have a car moving by and we're gonna use a slow shutter speed. We're gonna stand, I'm gonna stand there and I'm gonna take the photo is right when the car is in front of me. So I have to snap it exactly when the car is in front of me. Um, and just standing still, right? Just standing still, just let that car go by. And the car should look blurry, right? So you should have the car looking kind of, kind of blurry, but the background will be sharp, okay? So motion blur, background, sharp, in focus, subject, blurry, out of focus. The second one we're gonna do is a pan shot. And this one is really fun. I, I gotta say, I like the pan shots a lot and they make a great special effect. Now, I'm gonna do this with a car, but you can do this with a person running, a person on a bicycle, a skateboarder. If you've got kids, you can let them be your subjects. If you've got a dog, you can make him chase a ball, right? Whatever it is, um, you know, any kind of a moving subject will work for this assignment. And I really encourage you to try some different stuff. I want you to practice on cars though, because they're probably the easiest and most accessible to be able to practice with your camera. Okay, so the first one is motion blur, and the second one is a pan shot. A pan shot, on, in contrast to the motion blur, the pan shot is background is sharp. I mean, I'm sorry, background is blurry. And the subject is sharp and in focus. Now to do this, you've got to pre-focus your camera and you should pre-focus with this too. Um, on a, on a uh, manual camera, you would, I want you to actually manually focus. If you're doing, say, the, if you're uh, taking a photo of a car, I want you to focus like on in the to the on the middle of the street, like maybe the little lines on the middle of the street. That'll help you to have a proper focus. Okay, it's called pre-focusing your camera. Um, the pan shot, you have to do it. You have to pre-focus because otherwise, the the subject will not be in sharp focus, and that's what makes this photograph so awesome. Is the subjects in focus and the backgrounds blurry? And how you do that? So. When we do that, so we'll have, instead of the houses being in sharp focus, they're gonna be kind of blurry like this. And the subject is going to be in sharp focus. So the car is gonna be in sharp focus while the background, whoops, while the background is blurred out. 
And it's a really awesome effect that will amaze your friends. They'll, at, well, they'll wonder, how did you get that cool photograph? It looks professional. Dude, I got it from photography class with Ms. Sullivan, right? So um, background blurry, subject sharp. And how you're gonna do that, and I'm gonna demonstrate this, but how you're gonna do that is you're gonna follow your subject with your camera, which is why pre-focusing is so important. If you have a point and shoot camera, you're gonna pre-focus by pressing halfway down on your shutter release button, okay? So remember, we have, we're have we talking about two different types of cameras here. Um, we're talking about a fully manual camera, like a DSLR or SLR, and we're talking about a, a camera that is not fully manual, like a, a point and shoot or a crossover, where you can't pre-focus. The only pre-focus that you can do is by pressing your shutter release halfway down, okay? So really important that we have those distinctions. Um, so for a fully manual camera, um, you're going to keep your shutter speed at 1 30th of a second, right? Slow shutter. And when you see a car coming, and try to pick a street where the car is go pretty fast, which, which is pretty much every street in Salinas. Everyone's speeding around like maniacs, right? Um, be careful crossing the street. And listen, don't go out in the street, right? Make sure you stand on the curb or on the sidewalk away from the street. Do not get in the gutter. I don't want anyone hit by a car while they're doing this, this project, okay? Um, so you're going to follow your subject. So if I'm looking at the street right now, and I see there's a car coming way over there, right? I'm going to take my camera, I'm gonna pre-focus it on the street or pre-focus it by putting the shutter release button halfway down, right? And I'm gonna follow that car with my camera, click when it's right in front of me and keep moving. Now the keep moving part is really important because I want you to think about it like this. It's a follow through that will make your photograph fantastic. Um, if you are in baseball, say, right, you're playing baseball, you don't just go like this and hit the ball, right? You follow through with your swing. Now, of course, you do if you're bunting, right? You'll put your hand up and bunt. Um, but to get a successful hit where it goes way out, you know, in left field somewhere, hopefully over the fence, right? Um, you're going to hit the ball and keep moving with your swing, okay? That's what you're gonna do with your camera. You're going to follow that car, hit the shutter release button, and keep moving. And to do that properly, you need to kind of keep your legs bent a little bit, your knees bent, and, and, and your feet apart, okay? I recommend, because it's a slow shutter speed, that you keep your elbows in close to your body. This is why I want you to look through your, viewfind, your viewfinder. If you have a viewfinder that you can put your eye up to, you wanna look through your eyepiece, Keep your camera like this, right? You're gonna follow that car, boom, boom, click, and keep moving, okay? So you're gonna find, you're gonna get fantastic photographs like that. You can do it with someone riding a bike, a skateboard, a scooter. They can be running, it can be a dog running. I don't care what kind of movement it is, um, but you should be able to blur that background by following your subject, okay? It's important that you click when the subject's directly in front of you. You're gonna to have to kind of move your torso, click and keep going, okay? So that's the pan shot. If you have a point and shoot camera, you'll have to keep your, sh your shutter release button halfway down. Um, and you'll probably have to set your icon on a night scene, okay? So that would be the icon for a point and shoot or, a, or possibly even a crossover camera. Sometimes crossover cameras have a slow enough shutter speed that it can work. Um, so that would be your icon for a point and shoot for this one, for this one and this one, okay? Um, if you have a point and shoot or a crossover, I recommend you do this very late in the day, like right around sunset. You're going to have much better results, okay? Then the third one, we're going to freeze motion. Okay, freeze motion or freeze frame is where we use a fast shutter speed. So I'm gonna want you guys to put your shutter speed at probably one one thousandth of a second, okay? So one one thousandth of a second is a pretty fast shutter speed. Um, and we're gonna do, I'm gonna do this a demo with water, right, when I do the demo, because um, I think it looks cool and it's a pretty, a pretty easy do. 
Um, and you can do it easily also with a point and shoot or a crossover camera as well. Um, and for a crossover camera or a point and shoot, you might want to use sports mode, right? Where you have the little running guy. Um, you usually have a little icon that looks like that, or it's called sports mode. Sometimes they also call it um, uh, pets and children, because you know pets and children can't hold still, they're moving around all over the place, right? So you might see it called pets and children if you have a newer camera. Okay, so freezing motion, you're gonna have the subject, which is moving, and the background in sharp focus. So I'm, I'll, I'm just gonna use the car. I recommend you try this with the cars since you're gonna already be at the street. Um, the problem with this is it doesn't look very interesting as a photograph. Um, it just looks, if it's done properly, it just looks like the car is parked. So in the freeze frame, if you were using cars, right, you would have both the background and the subject. in sharp focus. Okay, that's it for this. Now on to the demo. I'll see you in a few.